Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be painting a rose in watercolor. And it's springtime where I live and my flowers are starting to bloom. And I was just really drawn to this picture that I found on Pixabay. It is a peachy corally rose and in whatever reflective light is going on, it's got like a cobalt teal cast on the edges of some of the petals and I just thought it was um, a beautiful complementary color palette to work with. So for this painting I used quinacridone red and nickel azo yellow and just a hint of the cobalt teal. You can see in the top left corner I mixed just a little bit to make some purpley tones for the very outer petals only and then I will use it again at the very end to put some highlights on the edges and the tips of the rose. For the vast majority of the painting though I won't touch the cobalt teal just because I do not want it to neutralize my peachy and orangey tones. So I'm using hot press paper for the very first time painting this particular painting and uh I made an order of some paper this week and I also got some new brushes and I decided to order some rough press and some hot press since I had never really used it. This is Arches Hot Press and it dried a lot faster than I thought it would. So to combat this, I am wetting each section completely before I drop in paint as I go. And one of my new brushes you can see here, it is a size 14 silver black velvet. And I believe I also got a Creative Mark um, Harmony Squirrel Quill. And it is a number three. You will see it in this painting. And of course, for these little tiny inner petals, I will use my number four silver black velvet for the small details. Now you can see me using that quill and wetting the petal up at the top there and you can kind of see in the reflection of the light as I wet it how fast that right side over there will dry. So I continually have to go back and add a little bit of water and add a little bit of water just to keep it wet while I work and blend the tones how I want them to be blended. As far as my colors and how I select them, I am trying to keep the quinacridone rust into the smallest, darkest recesses in the center of the flower. I didn't use much on the outer petals, um, mainly because of the granulation factor and the fact that you can really see it on this paper and I wanted it to be smooth. I just didn't realize it was gonna, I don't know, be so noticeable on this hot press because it's not very noticeable on um, cold press, especially quinacridone rust. I mean, it's not a super granulating color, but I could see it on this paper. Alright, so those are my hot press paper tips and the materials that I'm using, Imgram paints as always. So now let's talk about the actual painting. And it is a great, great subject for you to practice small controlled wet and wet washes because literally every petal is exactly the same it, they are this painting is super redundant for the person painting it but it is such great practice to practice you know how you control your washes where you want the colors to go which colors you want where you have to be able to do that to paint this and it is great great practice in order to become proficient at getting those colors to go where you want them to go. Getting them to go where you want them to go largely depends on the wetness of your paper versus the wetness on your brush and your paint load. So when you're doing wet on wet, it, even in a large area or a small petal, 
when you have a really watery mix on that brush it is going to flow out into your wet area and if you do not want it to flow you have to have the mix on your brush be less wet and less watery but there's also the chance of running into a brush that's too dry so if you put a brush that is too dry into your wet wash it's going to lift the paint off of your paper so it's really just something that you have to do you have to experiment with no youtube video is going to give you that feeling that you get when you do it yourself and you can tell it just comes from experience luckily though wet on wet is a very forgiving in my personal opinion way to paint so if you drop a whole blush brush load of color into your painting all you have to do is dry your brush back out and pull it back up or um, dab it out with a paper towel it is very adjustable I love how I can adjust colors until it's almost dry and that is definitely one of the things that I like about watercolor is having this period of adjustment it was especially helpful for me in this painting because I kept losing that rim of light around the edges of my petals so when I did I would just take my brush make it thirsty and soak up that water along the edges and this painting is pretty much nothing but just attention to detail and time this painting took me probably close to eight hours in about six or seven sittings to finish i am one of those people i really can't paint more for an hour without just getting to this point where i don't know what to do i get frustrated i don't know it just it's uh I need a break I need a break from it so I step back and I step away but I just didn't want you guys to think that I painted this in an hour or two this for me anyway is not a very fast painting I put a lot of time into it so yeah about eight hours it took me probably two or three days to finish this and it's not because it couldn't be painted faster but I just wanted the details in there especially because I've heard hot press paper is so good at retaining the details I wanted to use that quality of the paper and let it shine so when I begin to paint a petal what I want you to know that I'm paying attention to is where are the rims of light because that's going to give the petal form and actually make it look like it's turning and the other thing that I pay attention to is what are the cool values and what are the warm values so in a cooler area I will use my quinacridone red and quinacridone red itself is a warm color but in this painting it is my coolest color um, the yellow and the orange that I use to mix from both of them are warmer than that light wash of pink that I get when I water down that quinacridone red so where my cool colors are I will use the quin red and where my warmer colors are I will use more orange and then where the light is kind of hitting the petals not necessarily in the white rims but you can see some reflected light in there that gives a pretty yellow cast and I will use the yellow to mimic that I'm also going around the painting right now and just pretty much trying to reinforce my shadows so I can see what I need to do on my petals to make them look more 3d and reinforcing the shadows just gives me an idea of how dark things are going to be around those areas so my shadows are the darkest colors and the petals themselves are usually a little bit lighter than the shadows underneath them 
so I will use that dark color so I know how dark to go in the adjacent petal. Comparing values is very important. What I do for most of this painting while I'm dropping in my colors is I'm looking at the petal next to it or a section that's close and I'm going is this place as dark as that place and if it's not how much lighter is it than that place that I'm looking at that next darker area and I adjust to that value level. You'll notice as you begin putting in these darks that some areas of your painting will start to look flat and when something in your painting looks flat and it doesn't look 3D it just means that you haven't put in enough color you haven't put in the darks that you need or you don't have enough variation from dark to light in that particular area and for me it helps to find a safe place um, towards the beginning of the painting to put in those super dark colors so in this painting for me it was those three or four spots of the really dark quinacridone rust in the center once i put that in it made me be able to see how dark the rest of the painting could potentially go now for the fun part i am starting to put in the cobalt teal and i'm just selecting areas trying not to make it too much or go overboard but i'm putting in that cobalt teal to highlight some of that reflected light in the tips of the painting and i believe it looks really good against that orange color so here is the completed painting and i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you will give it a try if you want to see more from me go follow me on instagram or facebook at ashley deboard art if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and i hope everyone has an amazing day thank you for watching bye